Members of the jury, if you have any question about any part of the testimony or any legal question after you have retired for your deliberation, please address it to me in writing and give it to the sheriff's deputy with the juror number of your foreperson on the note. It will take some time to answer any questions because I will have to consult with the lawyers and receive their input before answering your question. I do not say this to discourage questions, but only to advise you that it will take some time to provide you with an answer. As I told you, you will take with you into the jury room copies of the instructions that I am reading to you. The lawyers and I have determined that these instructions contain all the laws that are necessary for you to know in order to decide the case. I cannot give you a trial transcript. No such transcript exists. We count on the jury to rely on its collective memory. You have been allowed to take notes during the trial, and you may take those notes with you into the jury room. You should not consider those notes binding or conclusive, whether they are your notes or those of another juror. The notes should be used as an aid to your memory and not as a substitute for it. It is your recollection of the evidence that should control. You should disregard anything contrary to your recollection that may appear from your own notes or those of another juror. You should not give any greater weight to a particular piece of evidence solely because it is referred to in a note taken by a juror. Now we all have feelings, assumptions, perceptions, fears, and stereotypes about others. Some biases we are aware of and others we might not be fully aware, aware of, which is why they are called implicit or unconscious biases. No matter how unbiased we think we are, our brains are hardwired to make unconscious decisions. We look at others and filter what they say through the lens of our own personal experience and background. Because we all do this, we often see life and evaluate evidence in a way that tends to favor people who are like ourselves or who have had life experiences like our own. We can also have biases about people like ourselves. One common example is the automatic association of male with career and female with family. Bias can affect our thoughts, how we remember what we see and hear, whom we believe or disbelieve, and how we make important decisions. As jurors, you are being asked to make an important decision in this case. You must, one, take the time you need to reflect carefully and thoughtfully about the evidence. Two, think about why you are making the decision you are making and examine it for bias. Reconsider your first impressions of the people and the evidence in this case. If the people involved in this case were from different backgrounds, for example, richer or poorer, more or less educated, older or younger, or of a different gender, gender identity, race, religion, or sexual orientation, would you still view them and the evidence the same way? Three, listen to one another. You must carefully evaluate the evidence and resist and help each other resist any urge to reach a verdict influenced by bias for or against any party or witness. Each of you have different backgrounds and will be viewing this case in light of your own insights, assumptions, and biases. Listening to different perspectives may help you to better identify the possible effects these hidden biases may have on decision making. And four, resist, re resist jumping to conclusions based on personal likes or dislikes, generalizations, gut feelings, prejudices, sympathies, stereotypes, or unconscious biases. The law demands that you make a fair decision based solely on the evidence, your individual evaluations of that evidence, your reason and common sense, and these instructions. When you return to the jury room to discuss this case, you must select a jury member to be four persons. That person will lead your deliberations. In order for you to return a verdict, whether guilty or not guilty, each juror must agree with that verdict. Your verdict must be unanimous. You should discuss this case with one another and deliberate with a view towards reaching agreement if you can, if you can do so without violating your individual judgment. You should decide the case for yourself, but only after you have discussed the case with your fellow jurors and have carefully considered their views. You should not hesitate to re-examine your views and change your opinion if you become convinced they are erroneous. But you should not surrender your honest opinion simply because other jurors disagree 
or merely, or merely to reach a verdict. A single verdict form for each count has been prepared for you, your use, and when you have finished your deliberations and have reached a verdict as to a specific count, the foreperson should mark the appropriate choice on the form with an X and then date and sign the verdict form, filling in the foreperson's juror number on the indicated line, and then signing the foreperson's name on the second line. And just so you know, the forms look like this. So there's very little to add, just an X, your juror number of the foreperson, and the foreperson's signature. The order in which the guilty and not guilty choices appear on the verdict forms is strictly alphabetical and should not in any way be considered as indicating which choice is the correct choice. When all the verdict forms are completed, the forms should be placed in the provided envelope, sealed and given to the deputy who will convey the verdicts to the court. At a time designated by the court, your verdict will be read out loud in the courtroom in your presence. During your deliberations, you must not let bias, prejudice, passion, sympathy, or public opinion influence your decision. You must not consider any consequences or penalties that might follow from your verdict. You must not be biased in favor of or against any party or witness because of his or her disability, gender, race, religion, ethnicity, sexual orientation, age, national origin, or socioeconomic status. 